While we normally think a company is manipulating their earnings, they can also manipulate their cash flows. If you remember from the cash flow statement, we've got three types of cash flows, operating, investing, and financing. And operating is the one that companies want to manipulate the most. They want to increase the amount of operating cash flow and make it as high as possible. Why is that? Because investors look to operating cash flow as a critical measure of the long-term viability of this company. This is the cash that the company can generate from its business operations. We know a company can generate cash from financing by borrowing money or issuing stock. We want to know, can they generate enough cash from actually selling products or providing services to stay in business? Okay, and that's what operating cash flow tells you. And so companies want to make this look as high as possible to make it look like, yeah, yeah, actually we're doing fine when it comes to operating cash flow. And also companies know that investors will have a problem with a discrepancy. So if we have net income increasing like this, there's our net income, and we have operating cash flow going down, investors will see this as, whoa, there's a warning sign that there could be problems. Can we really trust this company's uh, net income? Is, it, is it, this company really improving its performance? Why is that operating cash flow going down? So they want to minimize any kind of uh, discrepancy between net income and operating cash flow. That's one thing companies want to do. And just in general, they want to show high operating cash flow to show that, hey, we've got a viable business here. So that's why companies have an incentive to manipulate cash flow. They're trying to pump up the operating cash flow as high as possible. So what they're going to do is they can try and, number one, they can try and take cash, basically cash inflows that are investing or financing, so cash inflows from those areas, and try to move them and make them a cash inflow in the operating section. And then cash outflows that would normally be in the operating section, so something that would be a use of cash in the operating section, cash going out the door, they try and put it in investing or financing. Okay, So think, think about it like this. You have a $500 cost, and it's a use of cash. So this is like, okay, $500 going out the door, cash. Do you want it to be decreasing operating cash flow or investing or financing? You'd rather have it in investing, for example, than operating because company or investors expect to see the company investing and plowing money into the business and, and you know, cash outflows and investing. Cash outflows and investing aren't seen as a warning sign or any kind of problem. Okay, so they want to pump up the operating cash flow, and they can also do that by having sustain, un, unsustainable one-time activities, like just, for example, if they were to sell a bunch of receivables, delay payment of their vendors, there are things they can do that are not sustainable in the long run, but just a one-time bump uh, to the operating cash flow. I'm going to give you an example of that. We'll, we'll talk about Home Depot in a minute. So I just want to go through a little bit more detail. I, I just talked about the different ways that they manipulate cash flows, the unsustainable activities and uh, taking cash inflows from investing or financing and putting them in the operating section and then taking the bad stuff, cash outflows that are in the operating section, take them out of the operating section, move them to investing or financing. So let's, let's go through. So we'll start here. We've got cash inflows from investing or financing. How do we get them in the operating section? Uh, so if a company were to take a borrowing, okay, where they're actually borrowing money and make it look like a sale, that's that's one thing to look out for. Now you say, how would a company do that? Well, let's say let's say that they went to a, a bank, okay, and they needed money. So they said to the bank, hey, can can we have some money? Okay, we need we need to borrow, and basically they they go and they they say, all right, well the bank wants collateral, so they give them inventory. They give them inventory as collateral, but the, so they have like quote unquote sold the inventory to the bank, but they haven't really sold the inventory to the bank because they have an agreement, they have a side agreement with the bank to buy that inventory back. So really, the, the, the bank isn't in the business of buying their inventory, right? So this is really, this is just, it's just collateral. Right, the inventory is serving as collateral. This is a financing arrangement, right? The bank didn't actually buy their inventory and is going to become a retailer or something. Okay, the inventory is serving as collateral, but so really, this should be a cash inflow from financing. But they could say, well, yeah, we sold our inventory. That's cash inflow in operating. You see, you see how sneaky they can be now. I think of a bogus sale of receivables, for example. So if you sell your receivables, normally that would be a cash inflow in the operating section. The reason I say it's bogus because sometimes a company will say that they have sold the receivables, but they still retain all the risk of those receivables. And so if they aren't going to be collected or there's a high risk they're not going to be collected or, or some kind of issue, 
or maybe there maybe there's an art issue uh, we've got an arrangement with a bank and the receivables are serving as collateral or something like that where they really have not gotten rid of the risk and stuff of the receivables then that could really be a financing transaction but they could try and book the cash inflow in the operating section now as we think about cash outflows that are being shifted to the investing or financing section improper capitalization where you say okay um let's, let's, we got some kind of routine expense like for example worldcom worldcom uh telecommunications company big fraud line costs okay routine expense but they capitalize it made it an asset depreciate over time so then the cash outflow for these line costs uh, which were basically what they were paying to use, uh, uh, you know, other telecommunication companies um, to use use their network to fill in gaps in their own network. So when they pay those cash outflow, they put that as cash flow from investing activity. When in reality, this was a routine uh, expense and it should have been cash outflow in the operating section. So there's an example of improper capitalization. Boomerang transactions, I, I'll give you actually a, a similar uh, one. Global Crossing, so the company Global Crossing, they had a big fraud and basically they had uh, among other things they had the c capacity swaps okay so there were another tel uh, communications company and a hundred million dollar capacity swap with quest okay we'll hey we'll, we need a hundred million dollars of capacity from you you need a hundred million of capacity from us so we'll do a swap here's the thing when global crossing when that when they were taking the cash inflow of the hundred million from quest they report that is operating cash inflow but the hundred million paid to Quest, they treat as a operating cash, or excuse me, a cash outflow from investing. So, in other words, look, there's just there's no money being changed hands here because it's a swap of a hundred million dollars, right? I give you a hundred million, you give me a hundred million. Oh, I guess we're at a net basis. We don't have any money change hands. But uh, for accounting on the cash flow statement, they had plus a hundred million in the operating section, right? The hundred million they were, they got. But then the minus 100 million, it should have been a wash in the operating section. Oh, we got 100 million, but we spent 100 million. But they put that in the investing side. So the cash outflow went to investing, the cash inflow went to operating. Do you see, you see what I mean there? Yeah, so you got to watch out for things like that. Now, in terms of unsustainable activities, what I'm talking about are things that there, there's nothing necessarily illegal about it or anything, and it might even be a good business practice. But as an investor, when you're looking at the cash flow statement, you got to realize, okay, they can only do this once or twice. They can't. This isn't going to be a sustainable source of cash flow. For example, if they for they have a bunch of receivables and they don't normally sell their receivables, and all of a sudden they sell a bunch of their receivables, they sell five, you know, five hundred million dollars of receivables or something. And so that's going to be a big blip, a, good, uh, a boost there to the operating cash flow. And that's great. I'm not saying they shouldn't sell the receivables. A lot of companies sell their receivables. But if they don't normally sell the receivables and all of a sudden they do, it's going to show up in the operating cash flow and it's going to, it's going to be higher. It's going to be higher than usual. It just know that, okay, well, it's because they sold their receivables here. They don't normally do that. Are we going to get that $500 million boost next year? Okay probably it might not so don't count on it now paying vendors uh, more slowly and buying less inventory i want, want to do a, an example here so we'll do home depot back from uh, 2000 to 2002 so i've got three statement of cash flow here i'm actually i'm not showing you a full statement of cash flow i'm just going to show you the operating section and again just some things to, to look for i've already mentioned some of these but whenever i look at the cash flow statement i'm looking at these part large positive swings in the operating section so here we are in the operating section and let's look for some positive swings so 2000 uh Ray, uh bob nardelli uh took over uh home depot so they had a new C ceo they had two point just shy of 2.8 billion of operating cash flow here's the operating cash flow right here and he takes over and look they doubled their operating cash flow more than double hey great so i guess he must be doing a phenomenal job they more than doubled their operating cash flow but look Net income didn't more than double, right? Net income went up, but it didn't it didn't double. So why is it that operating cash flow more than double, but net income didn't go up by double? Let's take a look. We want to look for those large positive swings. Let's see see what happened. Okay, let's take a look. The biggest one here, probably change in accounts payable. Okay, went from 268, 1.8 billion increase here. Okay, 1.8 billion increase. What does that mean? Account payable went up by 1.8 billion okay during 2001 the account payable from the balance sheet it went up almost two billion dollars okay so 1.8 billion 
Now, that a part of that 5.9 billion of operating cash flow is that 1.8 billion, okay? What does it mean that account payable went up? It means they delayed payment of their vendors. Okay, so it'd be like if your company normally took 28 days to pay your suppliers, and then you said, well, let's wait 41 days. Or whatever, okay, so why do I say that? That so I'm not saying that's wrong. They didn't commit fraud. There's nothing like that. I'm saying that how far can you take this? Well, in the next period, they had a 1.4 billion boost, not as big. Okay, but they boost again, and they even disclosed they were honest about it in their 10k. They said that they were taking longer to pay their suppliers. Okay, and it wasn't they didn't have the money. This was just deliberate strategy, and it boosts their operating cash flow. Okay, now they can't do that forever, right? They can't get to like, oh well, you know, 180 days. You know, but at some point, you you know, people are going to expect their money, right? They want their money, so you can't delay the payment. That's why I mean by this is unsustainable. Yes, they doubled the operating cash flow, but Okay, you delayed payment of your vendors, and then here's the other one with inventory, change of inventory, okay? So basically it went from, uh, so this had been a decrease in operating cost flow of $1 billion in 2000, but it was just $166 million in 2001, okay? So that was, that was a, a swing here in terms of the difference between this number and this number, like $900 million, okay? So they bought less inventory, and again, they put that in the 10K. They said, yeah, we bought less inventory we're stocking less inventory in our stores. And maybe you say, that's great. But you know what? The next period, they had to buy even more because they then, then came back the next year and said, yeah, we had problems. We didn't have enough inventory. What am I trying to say here? This is, so this was a 900 million swing. Okay, so 900 million, so 0 0.9 billion. 2.7 billion, okay, of that increase, right? From this uh, 2.7 billion to 5.9 billion. So basically almost all of it was just due to, hey, we waited longer to pay, take, pay, uh, pay our suppliers, and we didn't buy as much inventory as we needed. We, we ran lean on the shelves, and then we had to pay for that later. So this isn't like, oh, hey, look how great the company's doing. They double operating cash flow. Wait, there's a discrepancy here. Net income didn't double. Why did operating cash flow go up so much? There's really two things. They just went lean on the inventory, didn't buy as much, and then they had to make up for it later in a later period. And they delayed payment of their vendors, which they can't do forever. So that's what I mean with being an informed user of looking at that statement of cash flows.